Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the Seaman. Now I want to welcome you to another edition of the Seaman's Cinema Sit Down. So, believe it or not, other movies than Avengers Endgame exist. And last night, I went and saw one. Uh, we just talked about The Long Shot. If you want to check out that review, you certainly can right there. Um, but there were also a few movies before Avengers Endgame with that Marvel 22 movie marathon. Um, I, I didn't get a chance to talk about a few of them. And the Thursday before Endgame came out, um, I saw a horror movie. I was really excited to see. It was one of my favorite trailers of the year after Us um, because of how it made me jump. Uh, if you don't remember, why don't we take a little flashback? Check this out. Oh no. Mm-mm. Okay, what are you backing away? Run! Run, what are you doing, man? Oh god. Oh Jesus! Oh wow! Oh, uh, she's in the car! Oh Jesus! Yeah, okay. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah. Thank you for that, James Wan. Good God. <laughs> I still, I get a kick out of watching that clip all the time um, because of how badly that moment in the movie caught me off guard. You're expecting her to come right at you and she comes from left field and you're like, geez. Um, but that trailer certainly got me excited. And then you throw in the fact that it's Mr. James Wan taking on some international folklore, which is some of my favorite uh, stories you can put in the horror realm. I love international horror film. And the idea of taking on this Mexican folklore story um, of the weeping woman, I was very, very intrigued with. And uh, I gotta say, for the most part, um, Mr. Wan produces, with director Michael Chaves and uh, writers Mickey Darty and Tobias Iaconis, some really solid stuff in, in this movie if you're a horror fan. So uh, why don't you pull up a chair, take a seat. We're getting ready to dive in spoiler free into the curse of La Llorona. Um, as I mentioned, this is Mexican folklore. Uh, she's referred to as the weeping woman. And, and the way the story goes, at least in the movie, um, I think her husband cheats on her or does something dishonorable. Um, where she's like, I want to hurt him, but he clearly doesn't love me, so I'm attack the only things that he does love. And in a fit of rage, um, drowns her two children. And when she comes out of that rage and realizes what she's done, she drowns herself, and now her spirit is left behind, weeping, looking for her children. And then the idea is that she steals a little boy and a little girl, um, and then drowns them in, in place of her children. So, really, really creepy stuff and delivers a lot of creepy and sometimes disturbing imagery. Uh, I was really impressed um, with what Darty and Iaconis deliver uh, screenplay wise uh, for the most part in this movie and what Michael Chaves does behind the camera. Um, and like I said, I said most of this movie works. They're, they're, uh, get, get the one bad thing out of it. The movie drags on a little too long even though it's only like 95 minutes long. Um, because it gets a little repetitive. Uh, you, you start to go from like the second act into the third act, and you're expecting things to happen a little bit more quickly, and you get kind of some of the same scare-type tactics over and over, kind of like, hey, we're going to keep her out. Oh, man, she got in. Oh, now she's out. They do that a few too many times, and that kind of, I thought, threw the pacing of a 95-minute movie off a little bit. But outside of that element, the things, like I said, that they put on screen really kind of make your skin crawl. And, and there are a lot of really solid jump scares, specifically in the first two acts in this movie, uh, that work really, really well. And you, you get really solid performances from your cast, and of course, you know, that always helps. Uh, Marisol Ramirez plays La Llorona, and like I said, she's absolutely terrifying. Uh, I love the story. I think the story is just so intriguing and, and, and rich. And what Marisol Ramirez delivers uh, in that role again just creepy imagery and the way she moves sometimes uh specific you know like in that trailer jump you know she's kind of just down and like that quick head turn little things like that really get under your skin and then they just know when to make her pop up to get you to go geez 
Um, and you get a lot of good ones uh, like that uh, throughout specifically the first two acts. And then, you know, you get kind of that more bigger, ridiculous kind of third act type stuff. Um, that also works, but, you know, it's a little bit more in your face and a little less jumpy. Um, but... The main part of the cast, also really, really strong. Uh, Linda Cardellini, big fan of her. She plays Anna Tate Garcia, who's our main character. Um, I believe she's a social worker. And at the beginning, she kind of visits a house. And there's something going on with the kids. So she kind of has to investigate further. And that kind of opens the doorway for her to fall into this La Llorona story that they tell. Um, and Cardellini's great, man. I, she really crushes it, I think, as a mom. Um, the things that she'll do or you know take on to try to protect her children and save them once she figures out what's going on. Um, very, very, um, you know, well done in the way that, you know, Yorona kind of goes after the kids first and that's her in. And then eventually Linda Cardellini comes around and starts figuring out what's going on. Um, and I just thought she handled all of that really well. And the two kids are ph phenomenal. Uh, Roman Christo and J Janie Lynn Kinchin, um, who play Chris and Samantha, uh, you know, Anna's kids, they're great, man. They, they really capture your imagination in their faces because um, they're so young, but they really command the screen when they're on there, man. They own their, their roles and they do really good stuff where creepy things are happening to them. <laughs> and I, you know, there's, you know, obviously teased in the, in the trailers, you know, you got the, the bit in the car, which puts you on edge. And that's the other thing, man, the things that you get in the trailers in the movie are expanded upon in ways that like they're just cut really well for the trailer but you get more suspense um in the actual scenes and certainly the car is one of those um when samantha is taking a bath um and they set all those things up really well where you're just like um you do a lot of this in the movie too um and the, the two kids really make you buy into that um and then um, you know, Patricia uh, Velasquez um, plays the mom that, that we were talking about um, when, you know, Anna goes to visit. And, and she's really, really good too, man. Like, she gets you to understand real quick that she is a mom who's got a lot of things going on. Um, and they're not of this world. And us, the audience gets to understand that. And the, the makeup and the way they just made her look like she was crazy and, and out of sleep and stuff. I, I just thought, uh, you know, Patricia Velasquez played that really, really well. Um, Sean Patrick Thomas shows up as the detective uh, that kind of runs around with Linda Cardellini's character. Um, and, and, you know, I like him. He's nice. But the big standout for me, uh, and the thing that I loved most about this movie, Raymond Cruz. Uh, he gets introduced as uh, Rafael Alvera. And I kind of put him in the realm of, like, the Warrens. Uh, only a fictional character. But the way he operates is very much like the Warrens. He's he's the one that is familiar with these types of hauntings and things of that nature. Um, and the twist to his characters and the approaches that are different that he takes from the Warrens, really, really interesting. Also exemplifying more Mexican culture um, and, and folklore and stuff into the movie that just provides a really rich environment. Um, and what's great about his character is if you want to dive into more Mexican folklore... You can utilize him the way you utilize the Warrens. And that could open up an entire world, which is really, really neat. And James Wan is so good at doing that. And there's one surprise in the movie that features a character who I won't name. Um, because when they show up, that's that's the surprise. And you go, oh, and it was great to see that person. Uh, and I really dug what they brought to the movie and the way they introduce, um, you know, Cardellini's character to, uh, you know, Raymond Cruz's character. And... Just really rich stuff. Got got me super excited. Um, and it, what, the moment it happened, I was like, I went to my body, I was like, oh, do you know what's, dude? It was cool. Um, so like I said, you, you know, you get a really solid cast performance. And, you know, your writing and directing and just production team give you really creepy imagery that drives the majority of this movie. Yes, there's a little bit of a pacing problem toward the back half of the second act. But first act, really strong. Movie ends sort of abruptly but it is a big build that that you know works uh well you just kind of get into this part of that stumble where you kind of get into it i don't know how we're going to resolve this and then you're like that's how we resolve it um but for the most part i really dug uh the curse of la llorona despite you know a couple of stumbles that might be in there and i really like what this movie kind of opens up um to james wan and his you know horror crew i think they could dive into a whole bunch of other interesting folklore that would be cool to see on screen so i really dug the curse of la llorona 
question is, did you, man? It's been out for a few weeks now, so if you went and saw the movie, tell me what you did and didn't like. Uh, did you jump out of your seat at all? Uh, were you finding yourself doing this type of stuff? stuff at all um you know what was kind of creeping you out what were you digging uh did the movie just fall flat did you not care and if you haven't seen the movie you'll see man and touched you i hope i have man especially if you're a horror fan you want to go get a couple good jump scares in this is a solid movie to do it so uh, let me know all your thoughts about what you're thinking of and if you're gonna go see the movie down below as always if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up and if you're new here and you want to come join on all of my scary creepy fun Go hit that uh, little subscribe button and then the little bell that follows so you can get alerts when I drop, you know, horror reviews and trailer reactions. My horror trailer reactions are, are quite wonderful. If you, if you don't remember, uh, let's run it back one more time. Oh, no. Mm-mm. Okay, why are you backing away? Run! Run, what are you doing, man? Oh, God. Oh, Jesus! Oh, wow! Oh, I go watch myself do. I, is it bad that I get a kick out of myself doing stupid stuff on camera? <laughs> I do. I enjoy it. And if you do, La Llorona uh, will certainly make you jump like that. Uh, so for the Seaman's Cinema Sit Down, I'm the Seaman. I'm signing off. Llorona. Well, well. If you aren't still here, looking for something else to check out that's Seaman related, why don't you check out a video like this guy or this guy? And if you really want to help the Seaman out in year two, hit that subscribe button and come join the cinema sit down squad, kids. You know what to do. See ya.